Hi, I'm Mike Green with Optic Cyber Solutions, and today we're going to talk about the Information System Contingency Plan, or ISCP. Uh, provide an overview of the uh, document itself, and then uh, kind of walk through some of the benefits to organizations. So what is an ISCP? Um, it's sometimes referred to as an ITCP or IT contingency plan or simply a contingency plan. Uh, and really it's a, at the purpose, it's a document that describes the uh, recovery priorities and uh, objectives of systems. So essentially, you know, how to recover a system when you have uh, an outage, um, it kind of walks through specifically um, the components which need to be recovered and the order of recovery. Um, and then a whole process of notification. Um, this doc, this uh, specific document is described in NIST 834, where NIST kind of breaks down the, the key components of an ITCP or ISCP. Um, and as I mentioned, it really describes the coordinated strategy, uh, which may involve other plans, and we'll kind of get into those later, uh, things like the business continuity plan or disaster recovery plan. But really the document overall, it's a key resiliency document for um, individual systems for organizations. Um, and as I mentioned, it kind of um, integrates with other um, contingency, uh, other recovery plans, such as contingency plans or um, incident response plans for the overall recovery of the system, uh, supporting that holistically. And this document is also a um, artifact of risk management framework. It's a key component of that whole process, which involved both, both FISMA and uh, FedRAMP. So with the key components of an ISCP, here we have a few laid out. These are really the, the high level. It's not, not all encompassing, but obviously we'll have the system description. So, you know, really the, um, the system itself, the key components, the key technologies, um, even known interconnections of the system. Uh, business impact assessment, this is really a, a key point or a, a, I guess a, a driver of the ISCP overall. And within the BIA, you'll have the maximum tolerable downtime, which is the amount of time or allowable time for the system to be down, but before it'll material, materially impact the, uh, the system or the business, the business function that it supports. Uh, the recovery time objective, or RTO, this is the uh, time that, um, the requirement for the system to be recovered uh, based on uh, drivers for the organization. And the recovery point objective is how far back um, can data um, be lost before it materially impacts it? Is it two hours, two days, two weeks? Um, that's really the, R, the RPO uh, kind of concept. Key personnel obviously will need to be described within the ISCP, um, engineers, uh, you know, data recovery experts, um, any type of uh, capabilities that support um, disaster recovery, data recovery, um, <clears throat> um, uh, deployments, uh, reconfigurations, et cetera. Um, activation and notification procedures. So this is really how to uh, um, enact the ISCP when it's needed, uh, the, the not uh, notification procedures of you know, which components, which organizations, which uh, personnel need to be notified. Uh, the recovery procedures themselves, which are really key to how do we reestablish the, the system um, uh, of, of target at this point. And then the, the reconstitution procedures where you're bringing the system back up. Um, and then with that, you'll notify the appropriate uh, stakeholders that the system has been recovered um, within expectations. So here we have the three primary phases of an ISCP. The first being activation and notification. Uh, and this phase is activated when a system is determined to, to not be able to be recovered within its RTO, recovery time objective, uh, whatever that defined time frame is. It could be you know, eight hours, uh, 12 hours a day, 24 hours, et cetera. Uh, once that's been determined, the, uh, this phase is initiated by the uh, relevant declared stakeholder. Um, and essentially it kind of gets the, uh, the, the appropriate stakeholders involved for notification. Uh, from there, we move into the recovery phase. We have the you know specific engineers or system support staff who go about the uh, essentially the business of recovering the system uh, to its operational state. <clears throat> and then finally, recovery phase. And here is when the system has been recovered um, back to operational uh, uh, back to operations. And essentially, it goes through testing, any quality assurance uh, measures, etc. And once it's determined that the system is functioning as expected, um, uh, the uh, ISCP will be uh, Declare closed at that point of the, the uh, situation uh, resolved, moving back to normal operation. And as I mentioned, the ICP may be used uh, in coordination with other types of plans. So here we have a, a few plans uh, that you may encounter as well as the ICP when uh, continuing or re reconstituting a system. Uh, the first one here, B BCP or business continuity plan. This plan is focused more on uh, mission or business processes. So this is higher level than the ISCP. Obviously it's part of reconstituting any business, op you know, business operations, ISCP may be invoked. 
Uh, the next is disaster recovery plan. This uh, DRP typically or may involve multiple ISCPs. So if there's a disaster impacts more than one system, it may invoke uh, multiple ISCPs as an example. And then finally, the IRP or cyber incident response plan. <clears throat> uh, this system may also uh, activate an ISCP or a DRP, depending on the severity of the system, the type of impact uh, and the type of incident. And so here we have a few resources. Um, I'll start with the NIST uh, resource here at the bottom. So the first one here is NIST 834, which is the contingency planning guide for federal information systems. Uh, essentially, this document describes the uh, ISCP. Uh, but as we mentioned, this document is flexible. It's a usable tool for any organization. Uh, it's not uh, you. Uh, it's not restricted only to federal information systems. Uh, it's companion document, the one, the next one here, 884, which talks about test training and exercise. Essentially, this document is a guide for how to test your contingency plan uh, on, a free, on a defined frequency. Typically, that's annual. Essentially, you want to walk through it and make sure that you're exercising your plan so that it does meet expectations. You know, all stakeholders are aware of their responsibilities uh, and, and then actual uh, procedures for recovery of the system. Uh, the next one here, risk management framework, is 837. Uh, as I mentioned, ISCP is a key component, a key deliverable, a key uh, artifact of the uh, RMF process. I've also included our optics resources link. Uh, we do have artifacts and uh, various resources for the risk management framework, uh, cybersecurity framework, CMMC, uh, as an example. So feel free to check that out uh, if you're interested. Um, and thank you again for watching this webinar.